What is the true impact of your marketing campaign? What if you discovered that your marketing campaign are not performing as good as you want them to be? Would you do things differently? Welcome to another edition of Mama Boards by Apps Flyer. My name is Moshe Bloom and I'm the head of user acquisition at Viber. Viber is a leading messaging and calling application and we have hundreds of millions of users around the world. Today, I'm going to talk to you about incrementality and cannibalization user acquisition. Let's start. What is incrementality? Incrementality allows you to understand the connection between your marketing campaigns and the total growth of your product. And let me give you an example of non-incremental activity or cannibalization. When you're searching Facebook on Google.com, you will find the first results to be an ad and the second results to be an organic. But comes to think about it, the intent of the user when searching for Facebook is most likely to go into Facebook website. So when the user instinctively click on the first results, which is an ad, doesn't necessarily mean that the ad impact him to go into the website. Probably he will do it with or without the ad. Right? What we want to make sure in our user acquisition campaign is that the ads are going to be as impactful as possible and convincing the user to use our products. Before touching internal incrementality, let me introduce you to a very powerful tool, A-B testing. At its core, A-B testing is dividing your product into two products, into two versions, version A and version B, and dividing your audience into two audiences, audience one and audience two. And by comparing the results between audience one and audience two, you can understand which version was better, and this is how you're impacting growth. A-B testing is widely used among different teams and different companies, and it allows you to optimize and improving your product, your app, your app store assets, your landing pages, your CRM campaigns, your email marketing, and even us with paid marketing campaign. If you're running a campaign with more than one ad or with more than one targeting, you're actually optimizing towards better results and removing the underperforming ads. Now, to quantify it, let's use this formula. Result B minus result A divided by result B equal incrementality index. We're going to talk about the incrementality index later on. But if you're using statistics Try to practice it right. For example, use constant factors. While the experiment has two versions, the other factors must be constant. You don't want them to mess up your result. In addition to that, make sure that the audience has the same standard deviation. Or, my tip to this, use as high a sample as possible so it will be normally distributed. And try to make the results statistically significant. Right? Use a calculator to, to calculate it, but you want to make sure that the higher results are actually better results. Incrementality is a relative concept, and therefore we should use A-B testing in order to measure incrementality. The unique challenge in user acquisition, however, is that you can't control your audience. You don't know the unique identificator of each user before seeing him, and therefore you can segment the users into two audiences. Luckily for us, you can segment, we can segment our audiences not only by identificators, but also by other parameters, such as geo, if two countries or two cities are behaving the same, time, if two time periods are behaving the same, users from two different types of cohorts, products, if you have two products, for example, Android application and iOS application, and they are behaving relatively the same, or demographics, you can segment it by age or by uh, gender, whatever you want. Just make sure that every segmentation that you're doing should be mutually exclusive. Right? If you segment your audience according to, for example, NBA fans and football fans, they might overlap. And you, want, you, don't, want to make, you don't want to make an A-B testing with an overlapping audiences. I brought with me several examples of incrementality, segmented by time. Now, as you can see in those three examples, the blue line represents the organic results, the red line represents the paid results, and the purple one represents the total results. And although total results are rising in each one of those examples, it's profoundly different. Let's go to the first example. In the first examples, uh, in this first example, after I opened my paid campaign, I had a positive impact on my organic results which means that not only I have incrementality index 
higher than 1 or 100 percent, I also have a positive k factor, which is a topic for another discussion. In the second results, there is no impact of my paid campaigns on my organic results, right? Which is good. It means that the incrementality is actually 1, 100 percent. And on the last example, when I'm opening my paid campaigns, I see a drop in my organic. And by the way, from my experience, most of the campaigns, if they are on scale, they will behave as example number three, right? And we will go and see whether this is a good or not good. But first of all, let's go over a development of the incrementality index formula. So to understand incrementality in user acquisition, let's use this formula, which is a development of the formula that we had earlier on, right? Paid plus organic in the time that you started your campaigns minus organic in the time before starting your campaign divided by paid will give you the incrementality index that your marketing effort has on your entire growth. Now, to understand it and to use this formula, let's take a numerical example. Let's say that on T0, before starting your campaigns, you're reaching 1,000 results a day. Now, when starting the campaigns, the results, the organic results, drop to 500, while the paid results are now 750. So putting those numbers on the formula, let's do 750 plus 500 minus 1,000 divided by 750, and this is equal to 33%, which means that the incrementality index of that specific campaign is 33%. Now, is 33% a good incrementality index number? That depends. For some companies, that would be an amazing success. For other, colossal failure. But if you want to make sure that you're not cheating yourself, let's do some other calculation. Let's add that the CPA is $2, right? Going, ba going back to the basics of user acquisition, you want to make sure that the LTV divided by the cost of acquisition is equal or higher than 100%. So taking the $2 divided by 33% of the incrementality index gives us $6. Now, if your LTV is higher than $6, that's great. Keep on doing those activities. Those are ROI positive activities. However, if it's lower than 6%, think differently. And this is how you calculate incrementality. And you can do it for all of your activities or one at a time. To end this session, I prepare several tips that we at Viber practicing in order to calculate incrementality in a better way. First one is established analytic approach. Most paid marketing teams are focusing on the paid result that they're getting. However, if you're actually interested in growth, you want to make sure and you want to align the team so all of them will focus both on the organic and the paid results. You don't want them to cannibalize your organic results by achieving and, and achieving a good paid results, right? Second one is clean your data. Some campaigns that you're running are not impacting growth, right? Some of them are just protecting your brand or brand awareness, which is long-term long -term growth, but not directly aimed at achieving um, short-term growth. Therefore, you need to clean those out. You need to actually separate between the two different activities and calculate them in different formulas. Three, build your benchmarks. Um, in order to understand the incrementality, you must know the organic in T0 before starting running the campaigns. If you have that number, that's great. But if you don't have that number, my recommendation is close all of your marketing sources and see what's the actual organic trend that you're getting. Now, if you cannot do that, and a lot of advertisers cannot stop their activity to one week or to one month, do that. Close one of the least performing um, marketing sources. See what the trends, what's the opposite trend on incrementality, whether you achieved less without these resources. Resource. And then start by closing all, all the sources from the least important to the, big, to, the, to the most important and understand whether you have incrementality in your paid campaign. Stop when incrementality is decreasing by a lot. Four, be aware of the fluff. 
Incrementality has become a buzzword similar to machine learning or to artificial intelligence. A lot of providers will offer you incremental results. You want to make sure that the offer that they are getting to you is something that's unique and they, there is a value behind their offers. Five, if you decided to work with a partner and calculate incrementality, make sure to control the raw data of the test. Don't satisfy it with just the highlight numbers. Make sure that you can analyze the data for yourself, get the raw data from, from the, from the uh, marketing uh, source, and that you can compare it to your data in order to understand for yourself the growth. Because not a lot of partners will tell you that their campaigns achieved zero incrementality. You want to make sure that you're calculating the right numbers. And six, if you're running a mixture of, of sources, if you have a portfolio of sources, try thinking about building predictive models. Start using your historical data to understand the contribution of each marketing sources on your growth. And with time, you will be able to identify the individual contribution of each sources of each source in a better way. Last word, some of the advertisers that I present them my theory uh, are asking me, why do I need another KPI? Why should I use another metric in order to evaluate my activities? And to them I answer, this is not another KPI. This is the most important KPI that you will find in your activity because if you don't have incrementality, you have nothing. That's it for today. If you have any comments, use cases or remarks, please leave it below. If you want to see other amazing Mama Boards episodes, please click on this link over here. Thank you all.